We've said it before, and we'll say it again. NXT TakeOver? Wow. Yeah. Uh, Fuck I mean, let's be real. The Raw Rumble, which is later today for you watching, yeah, uh, is like our favorite pay-per-view. Absolutely. Because uh, it has the obscenely fun and mysterious match, the Royal Rumble. And this year we have two of them. Yeah. Uh, so... It's hard to say that, like, oh, live up to that, WWE. Because we say that every time there's a takeover before a big yeah. four. Uh, but, I mean, I this is the first time I'm going into the Rumble going, man, do I feel like NXT just yeah. outshined my favorite pay-per-view? Yeah, good, yeah, like, it's not often we're like, oh, man, the Royal Rumble, it can't be nearly as good as what we just saw. But, I mean, wow. it, it has to fucking do some work I mean, this year. I mean, I'm going to say that Styles, Zayn, and Owens is probably going to be your closest hope to getting anything yeah. on that level. I mean, Usos versus... Uso, Usos, Benjamin, Gable, Gable ben- Yeah, has a but chance. I mean, you know, we did have the recent DIY thing, so... Uh, not DIY, uh, DUI. D- <laughs> DUI? Yeah, with... Uh, I think it was Jay. Oh, uh, that who's, was who's got the who's got the beardy gray more gray beard. That's Jay. That's Jay. Yeah, yeah over, over last weekend. Yeah, was that, that was before SmackDown. They were they were on SmackDown. Yeah, but it was kind of a that was what a lot of people are saying the or reason they, why they, the match with Chad was so fast. And the and is it wanted them to look a little squashy as eh. a little bit of a punishment. Uh, nah. Yeah, you never know. And it's a two out of three falls match, and that's Chad Gable's specialty. That's true. But anyway. Let's talk about, yeah, let's talk about NXT, NXT TakeOver we'll Philadelphia. We'll run over the uh, yeah. results real quick. All right. So we had the Undisputed Era retain the NXT Tag Team titles from the Authors of Pain. Uh, we had a few people in attendance. We had War Machine. We had Ricochet. We had EC3. Uh, Velveteen Dream defeated Cassius Ono. Uh, uh, Ember Moon retained the NXT Women's Championship from Shayna Baszler. Aleister Black defeated Adam Cole in the Extreme Rules match. And in the main event, Andrade Cien Almas defeated Johnny Gargano to remain the NXT champion, and then Johnny Gargano was attacked by Tommaso Ciampa. Yeah, no title changes. No. Yeah. Yeah. Which is kind of a rarity on a lot of takeovers. No, no, uh, yeah, no, I don't know, is is Aleister Black still considered undefeated, even though he lost the Fatal 4-Way? No. No? He's no. not? Okay. So because, because he was pinned in that match. That takes him off the undefeated list. Okay. So there's currently no undefeated people in NXT. Or is Lars Sullivan? Lars Sullivan hasn't been pinned yet. Okay, so Lars... Okay, he doesn't count because he wasn't on the... Yeah. Okay. Um, so anyway. What did you like about TakeOver? His TakeOver? The whole thing? Uh, it was really good. Well, what, are, what did I like? It was really good. Um, God, I... Here's the thing. My, I, I don't... Okay, I liked... Shayna Baszler's debut. I yeah. thought, you know, I, I've I've been very vocal about it that I don't like MMA gimmicks. Uh, my most hated person on the current roster is Brock Lesnar, uh, mostly because I believe MMA made him forget how to wrestle. Um, we'll, we'll give a, a good pass on the pioneers of the MMA gimmick, though. We're talking Ken Shamrock and Dan oh, the Beast. No, Severn. and here's here's the thing is. MMA gimmicks can be done well. Yeah. Dan Severn and Ken Shamrock, absolutely two of the best. Uh, Sonya Deville does it really well. Shayna Baszler does it really well. Matt Riddle. I wasn't that big of a fan of Matt Riddle, but he's changed. And then Josh Woods in ROH. He's yeah. he's kind of made me believe that MMA gimmicks can work. But more often than not, when they first come in, I'm just like, God, I really don't care. Yeah. But Shayna Baszler... You know, she got my attention in the Mae Young Classic, and I thought she used her MMA background specifically in this match against Ember Moon. Did a fantastic job making it look like Ember didn't have a fucking chance, which made it even better to watch Ember fight through everything to retain the title. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see where that goes, because I can't feel like, with everything that Shayna did in that match, that like Ember's going to be like on the shelf for a few weeks. Yeah, uh, yeah. I th- well, and I, I think what that does is that allows Shayna to come out on NXT and say, "Yeah, sure, she's still the champion, but who walked away?" Yeah. And then you have Kyrie Sane come back 
and start doing things with Shayna or because, anybody else. Really, I I think I think Kyrie specifically, either Kyrie or maybe Dakota first. Um, no, because they're they're touting Dakota off with like a, in, an injury now. Yeah, injury. well, but but she's she's been off of TV for a few weeks at this yeah. point. So I think either Dakota Kai. Or Kyrie Sane comes back to avenge the attack that they suffered at the hands of Shayna Baszler to fill that gap. And then eventually either Shayna goes against one of them and wins another shot or one of those ladies gets the shot heading into WrestleMania weekend. Yeah. What did you like about TakeOver? Um, Razor. Yeah. The Authors of Pain. Like I mean, both of them, they did a really good job. They told a really good story in their match. These guys are, I'm going to say, my, over the last year, one of the top most improved oh, people. Yeah. Especially because when they first showed up, man, they looked greener than goose shit. They were, uh, they were just two big guys that came in and threw people around, so yeah. there wasn't a and whole I mean, lot they, to... They even had that one thing when they first showed up, like a couple weeks in, where they gave that guy the concussion when yeah. they like, powerbombed his yeah. partner on his head. Uh, yeah, you know, it wasn't it wasn't a good not a good week for the Authors of Pain. Uh, but now they look so good. They're really polished looking. Uh, I really appreciate them. And I, Razor did a standout job in this match. Yeah. Some of the things, some of the moves that he, he was, took. He was the hot tag guy. That and the getting he was the one that got speared out of the ring, right? Yes. Yeah, that was that was the, crazy. Yeah, watching Bobby Fish cause Razor to tumble out of the fucking ring. Was fantastic. Uh, yeah, so they did such a good job in that match. So that match in general, but Razor's outstanding performance. Yeah. I'm gonna say if the Authors of Pain ever split up, man, he's the one that's gonna like. He's the one that's gonna Shawn Michaels. Yeah. Sorry, Akum. Oh, you're calling Akum the Marty Jannetty of Authors of Pain? Yeah, that's okay though, because that makes Akum's Paul, gonna kill you now. That makes Paul Ellering the Leaf Cassidy. Al Snow. Yeah. All right. Um. Okay. Let's. What did you love about Takeover? Is Takeover? Yeah. The, this this is harder to choose because so much good stuff. Um. Okay, I'll give you. Oh pick man, any, pick any of them because I can say anything good about anything else. So okay, you just go with your gut. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna right off the bat. Uh, even though I love the whole fucking show, uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna just kind of you know jump off of where you were. The the story and the way the whole tag team title match went, mm. it was fucking brilliant booking. The working over of Akam's leg, the hot tag distraction from Razor, all of the chaos happening at ringside. Kyle so, O'Reilly getting thrashed. Kyle O'Reilly taking a fucking whipping. Bobby Fish with some beautiful backdrops, by the way, even though he's the one getting tossed around. Bobby Fish... Fantastic. But then to have the leg of Akam come back and be the reason that Undisputed Era retains the tag titles was so fucking good. It was brilliant. Yeah, I want to know who was like, who helped them yeah, book that Who match. produced that fucking match? Was because it, it triple? Because I mean, that could have been it. That could have been Triple H. That could have been Adam Pierce. It could have been Shawn been, Michaels. Could have been Shawn. It could have been, it could have been a Paul Ellering idea. Yeah. That, you know, whoever did it, to whoever holy came up with that shit, idea. that was so fucking good. I enjoyed that so much. And tag team wrestling right now is so good in WWE in general. So to see you know, some... Some teams would uh, be handled better than others. Absolutely. Uh, but to see something... We miss you, Ascension. Yeah. yeah. We miss you, Brizongo. You know, when you were relevant and not just on the... Network no, on, w, on WWE.com, whatever the fuck you're on now. Um, yeah, no, I loved that story. It was so well done. Great work from both teams. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. No, I, I think I think that might be my standout moment. Is just that that injury coming back to actually play a factor in the end of a match and not have it seem contrived. Yeah. What did you love from NXT TakeOver? Um, man, my expectation... I, I mean, I, you go into ha TakeOver with high expectations regardless. Oh, yeah. Because it's... They're they, the they've, best... They've set themselves up. They're the best shows that WWE produces, in my opinion, from a wrestling standpoint. Absolutely. Um, so, I, the fact that 
multiple matches went above and beyond my expectations. Uh, talking about Velveteen Dream versus Cassius Ono, mm-hmm. the Extreme Rules match between uh, Aleister Black and Adam Cole, and the NXT Championship match between Johnny Gargano and Andrade Cien Almas. Uh, all three of those matches were just amazing. Yeah. Uh, they all had nail-biter false so finishes. Many, so uh, many good near so falls. So many near falls. Um, but I, uh, yeah, I, I really, really found myself enjoying how let loose Adam Cole and Aleister Black were given so much freedom yeah, they, in that match because they went crazy. Yeah. Uh, a lot of chairs, kendo sticks, tables. Uh, and it's kind of refreshing because we don't get that kind of no disqualification match very often yeah. anymore. And another, uh, you know... Because now the WWE, when you get the trash cans and kendo sticks, they like to do really gimmicky matches like your Christmas street fights, your Halloween street yeah. fights. You know, you, you don't know, get the extreme match in Philadelphia kind of atmosphere. Un- unless it's extreme rules. Yeah. And that only happens once. And so and even yeah. then, Bailey doesn't know how to use a kendo stick. Literally the worst match of 2017. Ooh. Literally. Ouch. Um, no, okay, so here's the thing. Another thing in that match that I really enjoyed was I didn't expect sanity. Yeah. Like... They did enough of a good job of making me think, okay, this is just Aleister Black versus Adam Cole. The only logical people to get involved are Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish, which they did. <laughs> yeah, I expected Authors of Pain to actually... Yeah, when the crowd started going insane. crazy, I was like, okay, yeah, Authors of Pain lost, makes sense. But no, to have Sanity come back yeah. and attack Undisputed Era made so much sense. Killian Dane doing that tope. Yeah, and almost killing Eric Young. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Like, it was just, it was such a, it's a cool moment. It's like, that's the thing is like on regular WWE television, on the main roster, I can pretty much guarantee and tell you, okay, if someone's going to get involved, it's going to be this person or this person. But NXT does such a good job of going, well, remember, you know, Undisputed Era did attack Sanity two weeks ago. But it, they did they did enough of it on NXT to be like, oh man, you know, they sent a message to Sanity and avoided that title defense yeah. against them. To which, which is good because that's gonna that's probably gonna lead into either something that's gonna happen in the tapings between mm-hmm. now and the next takeover, or that could be the tag team title match going into WrestleMania. Going into the wrestle pre WrestleMania takeover, yeah. I'd like to see Undisputed Era Sanity Authors of Pain Triple Threat Tag. That'd be killer. Maybe throw in Street Profits or oh, Heavy yeah. Machinery or another uh, one of the good Tino teams. Tino and Riddick, maybe? Yeah, like another one of the good teams. Tino and Riddick would make a lot of sense to have another straight-up heel team. Yeah. To kind of balance it out. They'd probably be the only actual heel team in in a match with Undisputed Era, Authors of Pain, and Sanity. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I... Yeah, or TM61. Yeah, they're yeah. coming back. Yeah, they're, yeah they're, they're making their return next week on NXT. So, yeah, no, it was... I, it's, it's good. It's all good. It's all amazing. Yeah. All right. We, we touted a lot of praise, uh, which we do every takeover. Like mm-hmm. I said, it's they're so good usually. Uh, you know, even the bad ones were just kind of like, yeah, it was good. Yeah. On the ones that aren't as a- good. Yeah. A- a- NXT. I think I've. I think there's only been one match where I'm just like in NXT. NXT in in takeover history. I think two matches come to mind where I'm like, uh, that was not good. Mm. There's literally only two matches in however long NXT has been doing Takeover, so it's been a while, couple that, of years that's, now. That's 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 impressive. Um, <clears throat> was there anything that you didn't like? Mm. Yeah, there was absolutely nothing that I hated. So that's yeah. that's not even a factor. Yeah, here. that's uh, that's something that we can't say. I mean, I have a couple of little things that are really nitpicky, but I don't know if there's anything you have. Uh, I th- you know I think I think mine. Uh. The multiple attempts of Velveteen Dream doing the rolling Death Valley Driver. Uh, there, yeah. there, there, were, there were a lot. There were a lot of miscues between Cassius and Velveteen. Yeah, and that move with that move specifically yeah. because the first time when Cassius dove and Velveteen tried to catch him didn't really work. Uh, and then even when Velveteen tried to pick him up off of some sort of like other spinning move. Yeah, like you know. Cassius is a big dude. He's got a weird thing. You got to leverage him up a weird way because he's not the most. His weight isn't evenly spread throughout his body either. Yeah. Uh, he's got a big round part in the middle of him. 
Cassius Ono is frumpy. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. sorry, Cassius. And that kind of that kind of does take one of my points from that. You know, what if you're gonna ask me what I don't like about Takeover, uh, which is nothing uh, except for tiny little minute things mm-hmm. that kind of just didn't even make me think they were bad. It was just kind of things, the little things that irritate yeah. me. Yeah. Um, The, uh, the something about the Shayna Baszler Ember Moon match. Okay. Uh, At the end sequence, I feel took way too long. I, that was that was my that was my second choice of things I didn't like. It definitely went on a little long. One of the things that I did kind of add to is it made me feel the longer that it went on, it made me feel the more like Ember Moon's title run was in jeopardy. Yeah. That was to that degree. That did a good job. The rest of it, though, because it was it was literally the last few minutes of just the arm bar. Yeah, and it, it, yeah, it, it became a little too much. Yeah, after a while, just squirming around in the same position for so long, kind of loses its appeal. Yeah, the story was still great, though. Yeah, story was great. Um, and I mean, you call me out for being a mark on this one, but just Johnny Gargano didn't win the championship. But man, what a fucking match! It was an amazing match. Uh, God, Candice and Zelina getting involved. Uh, that was great. Yeah. Um, it, so many times that we thought the match was legitimately yeah, over. There, there were so many times. Uh, you know, Andrade getting out of the Gargano escape more than once. The uh, fucking knees into the post that caused the end. Yeah. It was just, man, those two went to fucking war. They and killed it. I'm, I'm really hoping... That some way, maybe between now and the next takeover, can Tommaso beat Andrade for the belt? And make... And make Gargano versus Tommaso at takeover before Mania for the championship? You know, I, I kind of mentioned something like that a few weeks ago, I think on... and While we were talking about NXT. But if Ciampa were to come back and, and just... Go, look, I can do just what you do, do everything that Johnny has done over the last couple months and just do it faster and better than Johnny has. Well, I mean, like, and actually him, take the title. Have him beat Fabian Eichner. Yeah. Who beat Johnny Gargano. Yeah. There was another guy who beat Johnny Gargano. I don't remember off the top of my head who it was. Uh, was it, uh, it wasn't Cesar. That was... No. Um, I don't remember. There was another guy after Fabian Eichner who still squeaked a win out over Johnny Gargano. Well, Andrade beat him a couple yeah. times. Uh, with the help of Zelina. But, uh, I mean, there was another one other than that. But And then, you know, he did hit the two back-to-back victories over Tino and Riddick. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, maybe even have Tommaso do that and do it quicker. Yeah. You know, like you were saying. And then have him say, like, hey, I've done everything that Gargano couldn't get done. Give me Almas, because I could get done what Gargano couldn't get done. Yeah. Have him beat Almas and then have that fire up Gargano and have that be. Or somehow work him in and make it a triple threat match. Oh man, I mean, adding Champa into the into that already, oof, yeah, that'd be rough, but it'd be great. Uh, it'd be rough for Johnny. Yeah, it would. Uh, that being said, we've gone a couple minutes over, but it's a review and it's a good it's a good show. So why the hell not? But yeah, if you haven't watched NXT Takeover Philadelphia, do it. Do, do it after the favor. Rumble. Yeah, do yourself a favor. Watch it after the Rumble. Uh, even uh, though the rumble, even though the rumble in total is already six hours long, yeah. uh, you know, save yourself two and a half hours afterwards to watch uh, watch NXT. Yeah. That being said, that has been our NXT Philadelphia review. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Click the links down in the there description. There's so many social media links, and there's also a podcast link. That's the SoundCloud one, and there's Reasonable Wrestling fans. It's Reasonable the W, like, like wrestling. wrestling. Where you can check out our brand new unboxing, where we got people like our little uh, micro brawler Cody. We got some awesome t shirts, all the stable stuff. Check Los it out. Gobernables hat. Yes, which is one of my favorite things we got in the box. Uh, but yeah, check that stuff out. Check out our punishments. We do have a punishment set up for the Rumble. Yeah, and just uh, to say, going into it, we're tied. Yeah, we're tied we coming out of Takeover. So, uh, yeah. Rumble's going to decide everything. Yeah. So. Yeah, look forward to that. Check out all that stuff. Thanks for watching. We'll see you at whatever video you decide to watch next. And as always, fuck Fuck Mojo. Mojo. Don't let him in the Rumble. For the love of God, don't let him in the Rumble. Please. Keep him out of the fucking Rumble. If if he's in the Rumble, I'm going to book a teleportation jet and go in and punch him in the dick. He's probably going to be in the Rumble. I'm going to punch you in the dick. 
It's fucked up. 